Maayong hapon sa tanan. We are now at this very exciting event, the big reveal of the true father of Sergio Osmeña Sr. So in this event, Pamgrass the Cebu Heritage Hotel has been invited to do the live streaming for this event. So we are now here at the venue at Casino Espanol, and we have here at my back, you would see the family of um, former president Sergio Osmeña Sr. And this event would now start at 3.30 in the afternoon. And we are so thankful to the staff of Casino Espanol and also to the family of, of President uh, Sergio Osmeña Sr. For, for inviting us and for assisting us in this live streaming so that the public will know on who is the true father of Sergio Osmeña Sr. So of course, we know that uh, this year, um, the President uh, Sergio Osmeña, the late President Sergio Osmeña Sr. would be celebrating his 145th birth anniversary because he was born on September 9, 2023, 1878. Of course, he is the first Cebuano president and he was born in Cebu, and he was born in Cebu City and he, he was also before he became a president, he was a journalist uh, with a newspaper, El Nuvi, a Spanish newspaper, paper, El Nuvi Dia in Cebu City. And of course, he was schooled in the seminario uh, in Manila. And um, he also became a lawyer and he topped the bar second in place. And he was also elected as the provincial governor. He won a seat in the elections of the Philippine Assembly in 1907. And he was elected also as the first speaker, and he founded the Nationalista Party together with Manuel Quezon. So before we continue with the rest of the uh, biography of President Sergio Osmeña, we would like you to know that also in this event is um, National Artist for Literature and Historian, Dr. Rizil Mujares, who would give his commentary on the results. So um, the hosts of this event is uh, our Miss Annie Osmeña Aboitis and uh, also Marilo, Miss Marilo E. Bernardo. And Miss Marilo is so gracious and he, she was telling me that she really wanted to, to to join the heritage events at Palm Grass de Cebu Heritage Hotel. And um, so there, there are other uh, Osmeñas uh, in this event uh, right now. There are even Osmeñas from Iloilo, the Trinias. And we have also um, Stefan Aznar. We have um, Ayhol Ganza. We have Dr. Oporto and so many more. So there are so many um, attendees right now from the Osmeña family and other families. And also we have guests from the media uh, also covering this event. So if you would like to give your comments, uh, please uh, write it at the comment section of our event page right now. So we would be starting the, the event here to reveal who the true father of President Sergio Osmeña uh, would start at 3.30 and um, we uh, stay tuned for it. So, um, so uh, former President Sergio Osmeña, before he became a president, also was um, a founder of the Nationalista Party together with Manuel Quezon. He was also... Uh, and Nas the Nationalista Party is the oldest political party in the Philippines and in the Southeast Asia. By the way, we got this reference from the National Museum of the Philippines. And also, um, he was elected senator for 13 years, and he spearheaded a crucial independence mission in 1933, joining fellow senator Manuel Rojas in Washington, D.C. to lobby for the passage of the Hear Horse Cutting Act. So, the, uh, that uh, mission um, provide, uh, provided, uh, it aimed to provide a transitional Commonwealth government for the Philippines under the United States. So Commonwealth was eventually established. Uh, and in 1935, Osmeña ran for vice president alongside president candidate Manuel L. Quezon 
So I still have to see your kind of your comments. Uh, uh, if you have comments, and also you can write the hashtag big reveal. Uh, so. Um, So um, also, the Commonwealth of the Philippines was inaugurated and both uh, Manuel L. Quezon, um, they took their oaths of office, uh, Manuel L. Quezon and, uh, and uh, Sergio Espena Sr. So um, he remained uh, as vice president even when the, the war broke out uh, against the Japanese, with the Japanese forces, and uh, until Quezon passed away in 1944. So when Quezon passed away in 1944, Osmeña succeeded him as president, and he served Quezon's unfinished term and joined the American forces when they returned uh, to the Philippines in 1945. So Osmeña ran for a fresh presidential term in 1946, but he lost to Rojas, and he passed away on October 19, 1961 in Manila at the age of 83. So now we would go to the personal life of, uh, of President uh, Sergio Osmeña Sr. So if you would go to Wikipedia, it would, or, or, there was a lawyer who is a columnist who said that the father is of Sergio Osmeña Sr. is unknown. And his mother, of course, is Juana Osmeña y Suico. And also, there is this article in in the Philippine Star on June 20, 2010, by Wilson Lee Flores, saying that his theory was that the father of Don Sergio Osmeña Sr. was Pedro Lee Guchauco. And Pedro Lee Guchauco is also the forebear of several prominent families in Cebu and in the Philippines. So Pedro Lee Guchauco, uh, is, uh, is the forebear of the Gukongwei clan, uh, the Guchanoi clan, the Si Gaisano clan, and the Guchanon clan of Phil Invest and East West Bank. So even the Wikipedia would say that Pedro Ligo Chauco is the father of Don Sergio Osmeña. So, and then, of course, last night we talked with journalists and now LTFRB Region 7, I mean Region 1, Region 1 um, head, Ahmed Pizan. And he also said that historian Michael Colinane said that it, the father of Don Sergio Osmeña could be Sanson. And which Sanson could that be? So we would, if, if it, is it Sanson or is it Gochauco? So, uh, of course, we also know that um, his first wife was Estefania Chong Veloso, and his second wife was Esperanza Linjap. So, may we have Gavin here? Uh, may we invite Gavin to come here? Uh, Gavin, to, to come and uh, to, we would like to interview him. Gavin Sanson. Please uh, invite Gavin to come. So, so uh, and also, uh, Don Sergio Esmeña had 13 children, and his descendants include Sergio Serhing Osmeña Jr., the former Cebu City Mayor and Provincial Governor, and um, he he is uh, and Sergio Osmeña III or Serge is also the son of Serhing and a former senator. So uh, we have Gavin. <laughs> we have <laughs> so. Um, so, uh, and also another descendant of Don Sergio Osmeña Sr. is John Henry Osmeña, former senator and mayor of Toledo City and also a congressman. And also Tomas Osmeña, former mayor of Cebu City and also a congressman and also former congressman was a grandson, being another son of Sir Hing. And also another descendant is former governor of Cebu, Emilio Lito Osmeña, the brother of Sani and uh, candidate and a, a former presidential candidate. So we have with us, we have with us here a, a um, 
uh, a journalist, a multimedia journalist, and who invited us to, the, to do live streaming of this event. Sibuk <laughs> kulo. Yes, yes. Yes. So um, we have Gavin Sanson Pagares. So Gavin, uh, what do you feel about this um, big reveal that will happen at 3.30 today? Uh, I'm very excited. So I'll just wait and see. Actually, there are so many, there are so many speculations about who the true father of President Sergio Osmeña. And we have here also Miss uh, Bernardo, Marilu Bernardo. So the granddaughter, a great, great granddaughter of Philippine President Sergio Osmeña. So we would like to know how do you feel about this upcoming big reveal? Very excited. Yes, and Miss Bernardo would be one of those who would be hosting this event, the big reveal. So, uh, what do you think would be the outcome for the people? How do what how how do you expect the people would react to this re big reveal? Well, to begin with, it's a pleasure to meet all our long lost relatives. Yes, and so our family has just become bigger. Thank you. So we are so happy to be in this very exciting event. So we have also with us Miss Annie Osmenia Aboitis, who is also a host of this exciting event. So Miss Miss Annie, we would like to know how do you feel about this um, upcoming big reveal? What what do you feel as we are going to as you are going to reveal? I'm excited. I'm very excited. So why is it that you really plan to have an event to reveal the father of former President Sergio Osmeña Sr.? It all started in a party of Marilu. I was chatting with Gavin. I was telling them that it yeah. started with you. Last and we were talking about his uh, DNA. And he said, you know, we really know how to do it, but all we need is someone to fund. I said, that's no problem. So we worked on it. <laughs> Thank you very much and congratulations, Miss Arias Velia Aboitis, for this event that is uh, a, a historical first in the Philippines. Thank you. Very much. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, so we are now waiting for. So I would like to read your comments. If you have comments or questions, but I don't know. Uh, the the program this afternoon is is just to uh, the program this afternoon is just to um, there would be an introduction by um, by um, of course there is an introduction by Miss Annie Osmeña Aboitis and also uh, by Miss. Um, Marilu Bernardo, granddaughters of former President um, Sergio Osmeña Sr. And also, genealogist Tad Sales Lucero would already announce the DNA result of the father of Don Sergio Osmeña Sr. And also, after that, there would be a reaction, a response from the academic and uh, uh, community, the historian of, of Cebu, a national artist for literature, Dr. Rizil Mojares. So, of course, and that would be the, the last part. So I, we don't know if there is an open forum. So we would like to, we would like to read your comments. Uh, of course, uh, we have um, watching from um, SUC Erest Manila, Arnold Adante, and also Rico Osmeña. Good afternoon. The change of President Sergio Osmeña Sr. family history. So Rico Osmeña is also, of course, related to the Osmeñas and also a journalist. Uh, thank you for joining us. And um, Daniel Nino Paklihan, uh, uh, is joining us, a heritage advocate. Uh, good afternoon, Pamgras, uh, the Cebu Heritage Hotel. Good to see you. And Ahmed Quezon, our journalist, editor, and also LTFRB head in the north area of the Philippines. <laughs> uh, Ahmed says, Gavin, the social historian of Cebu, great to see you. So thank you very much for, for joining us and watching this um, 
this uh, event. And uh, we would like to, to know if uh, we would actually be uh, giving you a... Um, uh, a face a uh, live streaming of, of this event that will start soon so uh it is supposed to start now so do you have any do you have any uh guess on who is the true father of Sergio Osmeña senior so maybe the first one to before the event before the announcement so we would like you to give your guess big hashtag big reveal and if you are able to guess Pangras the Cebu Heritage Hotel will give you a gift certificate <laughs> so you are the one who would win the first one to to what 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 gift from Pangras would you want if you are able to to guess who is the true father of former president Sirius Osmeña. So anyway, the first one to guess will have a uh, a, a, a gift from Pamgras. <laughs> so so right now so we have seen uh, families of um, the Osmeñas. Uh, we have even a we have from the guest list we have um uh, Mi, Mimo Osmen, Osmeña the the grandson, I mean, the, the, the son of, of um, former governor, Lito Osmeña. We have um, also Stefan Aznar. We have uh, a Holganza. We have Oportos. We have Sansons in, in, in the, the guest list. Uh, Dr. Hinorasa Solana. And, and other, um, there are different uh, last names there. So, there would be I mean, there would be an a speculation who would be the 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 father based from this guest so i would not mention all the family names of the guests because maybe you would already guess i had a speculation also that <laughs> because of the guest list but then um we would find out later so the guests of marcello quintanartan watching from Spain as Cebuano. So Marcello, thank you for watching us from Spain. And so who is your guest? Who is the father of Sergio Osmeña Sr.? And um, Carlos Apuhin is watching. Thank you for joining us on, on Facebook Live. So we have also the, ge the guests of um, Vivaris Derrick uh, based on reading and Chismis Gaisano. So According also to this article in 2010, uh, that Pedro Lee Gucha, uh, Pedro Lee Guchau, Gu, Gu, Guchauco, uh, this is chismis, historical chismis, that uh, Pedro Lee uh, in a 2010 article in the Philippine Star by Wilson Lee Flores that uh, Don Pedro Lee Guchauco was the father of the Gokongwe clan, the Guchanoi clan, and the Siga Isano clan, and also, uh, according to him, the, the father, uh, could, and he could also be the father of uh, Don Sergio Osmeña Sr. So now we are really about to start. So, so we, so Ahmed Quezon is saying uh, Antonio Sanson. Um, I remember in history, we have this book at Pamgras, A Short History of Cebu by Junishu C, that mentions um, a Sanson who was also the reason for the Juan Diong revolt because of a land dispute in, um, in the south of Cebu. So there, he, uh, Sanson was, had also a dispute with the Augustinians and it was resolved later on. So, so we would now like to, do we have the stage? Can we show the stage already? May we show the stage? So, uh, so this is now the, the, so this is now the stage. So we are starting in a while. So there is a tarpaulin, there is a tarp that shows at the background, at the back of Sergio Osmeña Sr., of former President Sergio Osmeña Sr. So there is a, a silhouette or a, a blurred 
image of the father <laughs> of, of Sergio Osmeña. Can you show it? The, uh, yes, you cannot show it properly because it's at the side. So it's the big reveal. So uh, Marcello Quintanar Tan says, I'm excited, wow, and I cannot wait. And then Michelle Angelo Elep says, I guess it's Pedro Singson Gochauco. So it's another version because the 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 version of that Philippine Star article. So we are now starting. So uh, not yet. So <laughs> there are still guests. There are, we are still waiting a guest. Uh, some guests are still uh, they are still waiting for some guests uh, to arrive. So so we have here now some other guests from the Osmania family that have that has that have arrived so uh, in a few minutes um, there will the, the the big reveal will start and we are bringing it to you live here and thank you to the to the staff of the casino espanol who, <laughs> who have assisted us in this live streaming event and also of course to the very hard working and abtik paskilat staff of Palm Grass the Cebu Heritage Hotel. Stay tuned tomorrow because we have a coffee talk on pre-colonial aesthetics. You would know the art of pre-colonial Visayans or in, pre in our islands before the Spaniards came. So that would be at 3 p.m. tomorrow. We hope that you will also join us tomorrow in another exciting event with fine arts professor of the University of the Philippines Cebu, um, Professor J. Nathan Hore. So now uh, some guests have also arrived. So we, we would like you to know that um, historian and Dr. Isil Mojares was here very early. And um, he would be giving a commentary after the revelation of the DNA test on who is the true father of Don Sirio Osmeña Sr. Uh, so we have here the genealogist. Are we starting? Yes, we are older. Yes. So we have here at my side. Di makita ano? Pwede show at the side. Uh, so at my side is the genealogist, um, uh, Tad Sales Lucero, and he is uh, organizing one of the organizers of this event, and he will also be the one to announce the the true father, the the DNA test results of the true father of former Philippine president, Sergio Osmeña Sr. So um, for, for Jessica Cabahog, he says it's Antonio Sanson. So, um, so Jessica and um, Ahmed Quezon, um, original director Ahmed Quezon has the same guess. So the first one to say that is Ahmed Quezon, so we would know. And then... Uh, and then there is another guest uh, by Michelle, Pedro Singson Gochauco. Marcello says, Pedro Singson Gochauco. And Carlos Apuhin says, there was no official declaration, if I remember, the coffee table book about John Gokongwe. I think by Rizil Mujares, unless there are new rediscoveries. So Carlos Apuhin is... Uh, sharing with us this coffee table book. So we have also now with us Mayor Toma Tomas Osmeña. Uh, may we show Mayor Osmeña? So we have former Mayor, Cebu City Mayor Tomas Osmeña already here joining this event. Uh, uh, the revelation of the true father of uh, President Sergio Osmeña Sr. So, so we have so many guests uh, and also media persons here uh, joining us, and also um, we we this will this event will start in a few minutes. So um, we would be bringing it to you live through Palm Grass the Cebu Heritage Hotel Facebook and YouTube uh, channels. So, so. This is very exciting. So there is another one that says John Gokongwe or the family of John Gokongwe. So this is also the theory of Wilson Lee Flores who says that um, his theory is Pedro, Pedro, Pedro 
good channel, eh? I mean, so. Pedro, I mean, Guchauco. Pedro Lee Guchauco, is, his theory is that um, he, uh, the, the father is Don Pedro Lee Guchauco, and that's from Wilson Lee Flores in 2010. And um, that Pedro Guchauco was also the forebear of several prominent families, the Gokongwe clan, the Guchanoi clan, the Si Gaisano clan, and the Guchanon clan of Phil Invest Group and East West Bank. So, and of course, the mother is Juana Osmeña Isueco, and the, we would know the father in a few minutes. So, do you, do you, are there any more guesses from our online audience? Would you like to give your guess uh, on who is the true father of um, Sergio Osmeña, senior? Yes. So this would begin in five minutes at exactly 3.30, and we'd be bringing it to you live here at the, the page of Pamgras the Cebu Heritage Hotel and at the YouTube channel of Pamgras the Cebu Heritage Hotel. So thank you very much for the assistance of the Casino Espanol staff who are very helpful uh, in, in connecting us with, uh, for this live streaming. And also to the Abdik Paskilat staff, the technical team of Pamgras the Cebu Heritage Hotel. So we invite you to join us in another event tomorrow, the pre-colonial aesthetics of pre-colonial Visayans, pre-colonial Cebuanos, and, and the rest and the, the rest of the islands of the Philippines with UP Cebu professor, fine arts professor, J. Nathan Hore. So in a few minutes, we would be starting. So we have with us also uh, in this event, we have um, um, former uh, city councillor, the wife of Mayor Tomas Osmeña. We have uh, Margot Margot Osmeña with, with So we are starting. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Take your seats. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this uh, momentous activity. Uh, Sergio Osmeña Sr.'s true father, the big reveal. So to welcome us this afternoon, may I call on Mrs. Annabel Annie Osmeña Aboites. Please give her a round of applause. Good afternoon, dear family and friends. Welcome and thank you for being here with us today on a very special occasion, the big reveal of the paternity of my grandfather, Don Sergio Osmeña Sr. I am so excited to share with you the results of his DNA. Before we get started, I would like to express my appreciation to two special friends, Tad Lozero Rosales 
and Gavin Sanson Begadis. It was their efforts that all these came to light and this event made possible. I would, I would also like to acknowledge and welcome our newly discovered relatives, as well as our distinguished guests, Dr. Rasil B. Mojares, National Artist for Literature, Flav Flavier D. Ordinario, Field Relations Manager of Family Search, Agrippina, Agrippina D. Ordinario, Field, uh, a heritage supporter and history enthusiast. Am I correction, please? Agrippina gave a Londo, a heritage supporter and history enthusiast. Audrey Don Tomado, head of the National Museum, Central Visayas. Attorney Francis Michael Abad. Dean of College of Arts and Sciences of University of the Philippines, Cebu. So, welcome everyone. I will take this short so that my niece, Marilu Bernardo, can enlighten you briefly on the family history. <laughs> Thank you, Annie, for that warm welcome. Annabel Osmeña Aboitis, nicknamed Annie, is now the matriarch of the Osmeña family. Since we are talking lineage today, let me say that she is the oldest living grandchild of President Sergio Osmeña Sr., being the daughter of President Sergio's fourth child, Emilio, nicknamed Milin. Now it's my turn to say good afternoon to all of you. Along with my aunt, I would like to welcome all of you to this event, which we have named the Big Reveal. Let me introduce myself to you. I am Maria Lourdes Bernardo, nicknamed Marilu. Unlike Annie, whom I do not call Tita as I should, she is too young looking for me to call her that. I cannot use the name Osmeña in my legal name. You see, I trace my lineage to my great-grandfather, Lolo, through a line of females. My mother, Estefania, nicknamed Pipang, often called Senora Pipang, so as not to confuse her with her grandmother, Donia Pipang, Nga, as they say, Yangi Bangon. My mother, Pipang, was the first great granddaughter of Lolo Sergio. Her mother, Vicenta, nicknamed Ninita, was the first child of Lolo Sergio. So I am the first great grandchild of the first grandchild of the first child of Sergio Osmeña <laughs> Sr. All of us women with surnames that changed when we married, thus the loss of the surname Osmeña in my name. Regardless, I carry Lolo Sergio's genes and I always endeavor to be worthy of his legacy. Allow me to narrate to all of you the background of how the paternity project came to be. I wish to emphasize that it has always been Annie who wanted to know who Lolo Sergio's true father was. It's not a secret that he was an illegitimate child, someone who during Spanish times was identified as a padre no conocido, father unknown. Someone who all his life used his mother's last name, Osmeña. Before Paloma Osmeña Charlie, Lolo Sergio's youngest daughter died in 2006 Annie wanted a DNA test to be done on her, since at that time she was the oldest living child, oldest surviving child. And then Annie wanted to compare her test with a living descendant of the man 
that we had always been told was Lolo Sergio's true father. We repeatedly broached this research project to the historian and writer par excellence, Gavin Sanson Bagares, but nothing came of it since not one of us knew much about DNA testing. Fast forward to 20 years later, this year, 2023. Finally, this year, Gavin introduced us to someone who does know a lot about genealogy and DNA testing, Todd Lucero Salas. Todd is a professional forensic genealogist. What a mouthful. Which means to a layman like me that he uses the study of lineage or descent from an ancestor to settle questions, whether legal or for public discussion about family history. He started researching about family history in 1994 and published his first research in the journal Family History, the journal of the Institutes of Heraldic and Gene Genealogical Studies in Canterbury, Kent, England. He has published books on genealogy and history, including a book on presidential genealogies and the genealogies of Jose Rizal and his girlfriends. Ah, it can be interesting, right? Genealogy. Okay. He has published articles on politics, history, and genealogy in the Freeman and Cebu Daily News. Currently, he writes a column, History Matters, for the Freeman. He is also a professional practitioner of genetic genealogy, which uses both traditional genealogical methods, such as written records and oral history without written documentation, and more scientifically, DNA technology. DNA testing has become an important tool to prove or disprove oral histories and family lore and legends. He has assisted families on probate and unknown heir cases, and even a foreign organization to establish the Jewish ethnicity, ethnicity or religious affiliation of foreign soldiers who died and are buried in the Philippines. He was just what we needed. So Annie and I, along with my sister, Dr. Maria Socorro Veloso Enriquez, nicknamed Joy, who is out of the country at the moment, we commissioned him to use DNA testing to finally determine the true father of President Sergio Osmeña Sr. Gratefully, the DNA tests quickly and definitely, definitively revealed this. Additionally, we requested him to, uh, to research on who this newly, newly discovered father was. What was this mystery man like? Physically, was he like Lolo Sergio? Erect, slim, with the upright stance of a leader, with the noble brow and the smiling chinito eyes? Was he like Lolo Cariñoso, as Annie fondly remembers him, since as a little girl, she lived with him in Malacanang and literally shared bread with him during their daily breakfasts. Was he, like Lolo, active in politics? Did Lolo Sergio inherit from him the elevated sense of honor that made Lolo be called the exemplar in Philippine history and politics? Who was this mystery man? So now I turn you over to Todd Lucero Sales, who has the answers. He can better tell you what he did to determine President Sergio Ospeña's true father and what he has discovered about this mystery man. Thank you very much, Ms. Malou, for that uh, generous introduction and for giving the background for this particular endeavor. Um, it's a very big task, no? Ms. Marilu said I have the answers and I hope I can give them to you and uh, make everyone understand. Uh, I will be discussing the result of the DNA test uh, 
towards the end of this presentation. This is a short presentation. Hopefully we can finish it within 30 minutes. Um, many people told me when, when this particular uh, event was, was uh, made public, uh, what's the point of digging into President Osmania's uh, supposed father when they say that everybody already knows who his father was. Uh, but his paternity has always been a question, even though there are some who would say that it has already been proven based on circumstantial evidences who his father was. Many historians and history buffs would still say that there are still some lingering questions about who his true father was. But it's interesting when you Google with the terms Serio Osmeña father or who is the father of President Osmeña or any combination thereof, this is what you'll get. Pedro Lee Singson Gotiauco. Now, this is just the first part of the Google uh, results. Uh, but if you scroll down and if you search yourself in Google or any other search engines, you will get maybe nine out of ten. In every, for every ten results, you will get nine that would say that his father was Don Pedro Lee Gutiago. Uh, another interesting thing, if for the Apple users uh, with, app, with an iPhone, you can ask Siri. I try doing that just for a little fun. I ask Siri. Pedro sings in Is Sergio Osmeña's father? Uh, everyone heard that? Okay. Even Siri is confident to say Pedro Singson Gutiago is Sergio Osmeña's father. He do Siri doesn't even give you other options. Unlike Google with a lot of search results, Siri is confident. It's only one person, and it's Pedro Singson Gotiauco. So we will find out today if it was indeed Pedro Singson Gotiauco. And lastly, uh, even the reliable and um, uh, very popular online family tree, it's a worldwide, it's a connection of all family trees in the world, if you're not familiar with Jenny.com. And this is the master list, which means this is curated, this is kept uh, clean by uh, genealogists and online uh, enthusiasts of genealogy. You can read that his immediate family, he is, he is listed as the son of Pedro Singson Gotiauco and Juana Suicos. So technically, Wikipedia, uh, Jenny.com, and other reliable and reputable online sources would say and tell us that his father was Pedro Gotiauco. So that begs the question, so if we already know his father, what's the point? The point is there is no definitive proof. All of these are claims. All of these are based on circumstantial evidences and most importantly, from family lore. None of them, of course, will stand in court. So that's why, as Ms. Marilu said uh, earlier, uh, for a definitive answer to the question who Sergio Osmeña's father was, they commissioned a DNA test, which is the only way for us to prove the paternity of President Osmeña. So I will give a brief historical context. Um, it's difficult to understand the result if we don't look at the two men and the stories behind them uh, who were said to be the father of President Osmeña, one of them, obviously. As we all know, President Osmeña was born on September 9, 1878 in Cebu to Juana Osmeña. And at the time of his birth, the Osmeña family was considered as one of the most prominent families in Cebu, not just the city, but in the entire province of Cebu. Many of the men held positions in Parian, and many of the, uh, the family members owned vast land holdings all over the province of Cebu. They were businessmen, they were merchants, and they were married to 
most of the prominent families also the elite of Parian and the rest of the province. As Ms. Malu also mentioned, he was an illegitimate child, born out outside of wedlock. So he was a padre no conocido, the father was unknown. And again, as we all know, he became one of our presidents, uh, succeeding President Manuel L. Quezon, and he later became known as Cebu's grand old man. So that's a brief uh, background of President Ospeña. Of course, we know a lot of things about him already. His birth, his conception, his birth was always shrouded in mystery. There are a lot of stories, a uh, story about how Juana Osmeña supposedly really got pregnant, but that's for another, uh, another time for us to discuss. There was also a story about how the mother of Juana Osmeña supposedly tried to abort the child because of the scandal that she caused by burying a child outside of wedlock. So there are a lot of these uh, rumors, uh, family tales, and even tales from other families, not just those menyas, that the story became even more muddled and many people you know, did not know what to believe. But there are also many historians who say that many of these stories were probably created by the political rivals of Serio Osmeña because he was really a very popular and prominent Cebuano politician and a lot of Cebuano politicians, including Vicente Soto, uh, hated him and all of these stories were probably also made up because they wanted to destroy his political career. So it is interesting that among our 17 presidents, only Sergio Osmeña was illegitimate. So today we will legitimize Sergio Osmeña. So our 17 presidents from Emilio Aguinaldo up to President Marcos Jr. will now have official known fathers. Throughout his life, it is very interesting that Sergio Osmeña was very secretive about his family. I mean, it, his parents. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll cite two uh, examples that in 1931, there was a collection of biographies of prominent Filipinos. Uh, his father or mother, we, everyone knew his mother's name, but uh, unfortunately, even his mother's name was not mentioned in that particular biographical sketch. Uh, perhaps it was his request, don't mention anything about my parents. Another one, in 1944, a US magazine, Collier's Magazine, did an article on Sergio Osmeña. Uh, he, he was already the second, he was the president of the Commonwealth at that time, but according to the article, even today, in 1944, he refuses to discuss his father or mother or his early home life. So even these two examples tell us that Osmeño was very reluctant to discuss his parents. So perhaps, of course, he knew probably the circumstance or he knew already the identity at that time, but definitely throughout his life, he was very mysterious about his father. And even his mother was in the background. Most historians say that uh, it is unfortunate that Juana Osmeña, whose son was one of the most powerful men in the Philippines during his time, was unable to take pride publicly that, his son, that her son was Sergio Osmeña. So again, you can, you can see from the pattern that Sergio Osmeña probably did not want any further controversy. So that's why he kept silent about his father's identity. Despite that, despite the mystery, two names came out as the possible fathers of President Osmeña. Number one, the earliest or earlier of the two candidates was Don Antonio Sanson. Um, take note, this photo is an AI-generated photograph using a lot of photographs from the old Sanson. Thanks also, I'd like to acknowledge my cousin Gavin, Sanson Bagares, for the photographs that he collected from the family. So old photographs of the Sanson family, Sanson men, including photographs also of President Osmeña, 
where uh, consolidated a composite was made by artificial intelligence and an artist drew it to make it more lifelike. So there is no existing picture of Don Antonio Sanson for everyone's information. This is just a composite done by artificial intelligence. Who was Antonio Sanson? Antonio Sanson was a member of the Sanson clan of Parian. One, also one of the most prominent families of Parian, level, level of the Osmanias at that time. They were also merchants and they were also businessmen and landowners. And in fact, Don Antonio Sanson owned a vast tract of land in Bourbon, Cebu. He spent his time in Bourbon and in Parian, and it, his branch of the family was also said to have come from uh, Surigao and then Mindanao. Uh, but his roots were really from Parian as well. Don Antonio Sanson was also a Juez de Paz of Bourbon, which means that he was not only wealthy and socially prominent, he also had education because the position of Juez de Paz, later on during the American period, it became justice of the peace, you had to have a certain level of higher education in order to have that particular position during the Spanish period. So Antonio Sanson uh, was said to have married three times, or perhaps he had three wives. Uh, but unfortunately, what is known is that he only had one child, a woman, a, child, a, a daughter. So, and... For now, I have not been able to trace his descendants. So hopefully we will be able to do that eventually. This is the earliest reference to Antonio Sanson being the father of Sergio Osmeña. This was an article written by Vicente Soto on January 14, 1934 in the Progress newspaper. This is not a very flattering article. In fact, Soto accused Osmeña here of a lot of wrongdoing. So that's not the point of this article. What we're interested in is at the last part of this article. Let's highlight it. If you can read the third part, um, Don Serio, whom the latter called Tio, even if not a brother of his father, Antonio Samson, that's a misspelling, it should be Samson, but Samson and Samson are easily interchanged. Biongkong, his nickname was Biongkong. So that's the part, it's a very short mention, but it's a mention nonetheless. So this is the earliest reference we have found that supposedly Antonio Samson was the father of Sergio Osmeña. In another article, unfortunately, I don't have the actual article, but this was in a monograph series in 1961. There's a portion in that article that says the most convincing evidence to date that suggests Osmeña's father was a prominent wealthy man from the city of Cebu who owned extensive land holdings in the northeastern municipality of Bourbon named Antonio Sanson. Since Sanson was already a married man, it was not possible for him to establish a legitimate bond with Osmeña's mother. Nevertheless, Osmeña eventually acquired much of Sanson's properties in Bourbon, which I believe some of them still remain in the Osmeña family. So amazing, the, 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 the family has been able to hold on to the property of one of the supposed fathers of President Sergio Osmeña. And one of the most uh, vocal supporter of Antonio Sanson as the father of President Osmeña is, is the American historian Michael Cullinane, uh, citing from John Seidel's book from 1995, Cullinane, in published writings and personal communications with Seidel, expressed doubt about the veracity of the claims that Don Got uh, Pedro Gotiauco was Don Serio's father noting evidence that suggests that the real father of Sergio Osmeña Sr. was another Chinese merchant and that the putative kinship ties between the Osmeñas and Gotiaucos were convenient basis for a long-lasting business political alliance between the families. So uh, 
Michael Cullinane, uh, the American author and writer, uh, has always been a supporter of the Antonio Sanson being the father of Serio Osmeña uh, side. Uh, I'd just like to show one last, uh, there are a lot of references that we can find, but I just wanted to see, show you the highlights. One of the latest, this is a 2022 book by Michael Cullinane, The Chinese Mestizos of Cebu City, 1750 to 1900. If you can see at the very bottom of the uh, family tree of the Osmeñas that can be found at the last part of the book, Juana Osmeña is Suiko, not married to, but meaning there was a relationship with Antonio Sanson, and their son was Sergio Osmeña is Suiko. So this one is a definitive, like before it was just uh, suppositions, but in 2022, last year, with the publication of Chinese Mestizos, Michael Cullinane definitively puts on paper that Antonio Sanson was the father of Sergio Osmeña. But there is a second candidate, as we already know, and supported not just by historians and writers, but also by Google, Wikipedia, Siri, and other uh, online sources. Don Pedro Singson Gotiauco. Uh, he was a pure Chinese. Don Antonio Sanson was a mestizo Chinese. Don Pedro Gotiauco was a pure Chinese. He was directly from China who came to the Philippines with a rags to riches type of story. Now, I have not been able to find uh, older references, but one of the, this is the oldest that I can find, from 1992, uh, from the Forbes Zibenja, uh, a Chinese version of the Forbes magazine. Gotiaoko's second wife, a Filipina, meaning Juana Osmeña, but her name is not mentioned, is said to be the mother of one of the country's most honored senior politicians, Sergio Osmeña. While there are on hand expressed doubts regarding the authenticity of Osmeña's biological relations to Gotiaoko, there is on hand no evidence available to prove the contrary. So the 10th volume, this is very interesting. According to the article, the 10th volume of a collection of Jinjiang historical documents published by the Fujian Political Association indicates that Sergio Osmeña's Chinese last name is given as Go Sibin. Sergio Osmeña appears in the documents in Fujian as a son of Pedro Gutiérrez. So they also have their own definitive uh, putting down on paper uh, that Osmeña was the son of Gotiaoko. But what is even more interesting for those who understand Chinese or a little of Chinese, his second name, the C, Go Si Bin. C is four or number four in Chinese. What is interesting is that Gotiaoko already had three sons before supposedly Osmeña, which tells us that the given name, supposed Chinese given name of Osmeña, acknowledged him as the fourth son of Pedro Gotiaoko. So it's kind of very telling also that the Chinese side in, in Fujian were already very confident that he is a part of our family. He is part of their family tree and already given the acknowledgement that he was the fourth son of Pedro Gotiaoko. A book by national artist for literature Dr. Isil Mojares, The Book of Go is a definitive book about the history of the family of Don Pedro Gotiaoko. So it's a very, it's a very amazing book. So if you can get a copy or read it, try to. Um, I'm quoting some of the uh, interviews uh, and, and references that Dr. Isil Mojares did. In his book, uh, one of the proofs that the Gotiaoko family has also, or the supporters of the Don Pedro Gotiauco as the father of Osmeña have always believed was that Pedro Gotiauco and Juana Osmeña knew each other since they lived in the same block in Parian. Now, uh, according to Dr. Mojares, um, he believes that although it's most likely true that Pedro Gotiauco and Juana Osmeña were friends and knew each other, this happened already after the birth of Sergio Osmeña. 
And the fact that by 1878, Pedro Gotiauco was not yet the prominent and wealthy businessman that he was later on, it is also very unlikely that he would have been close to Osmeña, to Juana, whose family was very, very rich and perhaps a little snobbish with people who were not of their level, obviously, because that's how it worked. They, you went around with your circle, own circle at that time. So it would have been impossible that uh, Pedro Gotiauco would have been close to Osmeña, to Juana Osmeña before the birth of her son, Sergio. Another uh, quote from the book, stories are told that Juana used to buy oil and matches from the store of Don Pedro, and Pedro Gotiauco patronized the bakery and gaming parlor, meaning suga, sugalan, <laughs> uh, Juana's which Juana's mother, Paula Suico, operated out of their home. Antonio Sanson, by the way, was also a frequent visitor to the gaming uh, parlor of the Osmeña. So um, they probably met there. Uh, it would have been weird, no? But the three of them met also each other. Juan, Juan Osmeña, Pedro Gotiauco, and Antonio Sanson met at the gaming parlor of the Osmeñas. Two other quotes. Pedro and Juana were supposedly often seen going out on paseos or a walkabout around the town. And it is further told that Gotiauco helped pay for Sergio Osmeña's education at Seminario Colegio de San Carlos and the University of Santo Tomas. Now, this particular story has also been often repeated uh, in various newspaper articles, magazine articles. And in fact, in the book of um, John Gokongwe, in his biography, uh, he said, or autobiography rather, autobiography, he said, he mentioned that they have a copy still of receipts showing that Pedro Gotiauco and the Gotiauco family helped President Sergio Osmeña in his early education. So all of these things were also taken into consideration by some historians and perhaps by some members of the Gotiauco family as definitive proof that Don Pedro Gotiauco would not have helped just anyone who was not his own blood. So that's why he supported Don Serio in his education. So those are the things that are uh, put together by some people uh, to prove that Don Pedro Gotiauco was definitely the father of Serio Osmeña. In his last years, it is said that Don Serio wanted to tell his family who his father was. Uh, there are several people today who have heard it secondhand and some thirdhand from people who knew the story that Don Serio wanted before he died to tell his children and grandchildren who his father was. Unfortunately, um, his wife at that time, second wife, Doña Esperanza Limhap Osmeña, decided that it was not the right time to tell people about it. Why? When he was dying, uh, we don't know, but he, probably she didn't want to rock the boat. She didn't want uh, members of the other families to be uh, insulted or perhaps offended if the truth of, his, of, of her husband's father came out. We don't know. They're all unfortunately gone. So unfortunately, all people who knew Sergio Osmeña's father's identity are now gone. Hence, the DNA test that we did on the Osmeña, the Gotiauco, and Sanson families. Magazines. DNA testing has become more useful and commercialized recently. It is now more. and accurate, and for, un, unlike before. And as we know, many DNA testing has helped solve centuries-old mysteries. Um, one of them, an example, was a discovery of a body in England in 2012, which historians believed was the body of King Richard III, because his body was never 
known or located before. Using DNA testing or through the use of genetic genealogy, they used the DNA of distant relatives of Richard, King Richard III through his illegitimate children, tracing it down to two cousins who were able to prove, who were able to donate their DNA, which matched the DNA of the body found, which proved them based on historical documents. So there's a historical aspect to it and based on the DNA match that that was the body of Richard III. And I think most of us are familiar with the case of the Romanovs of Russia. Uh, the second picture are the, are the bones of the Romanov family in Russia. It was through mitochondrial DNA matching of the bones through the mother, the Zerina Alexandra Fedorovna, which matched the mitochondrial DNA of Prince Philip of the United Kingdom, husband of the late Queen uh, Elizabeth II. Uh, definitively proved that the female body with the bones of the children were the cousins of Prince Philip through mitochondrial DNA testing, proving that this was the body of the executed and massacred imperial family of Russia. So DNA testing has become really very exciting recently. It's not just about who the father of this particular child is for paternity cases, but it has helped solve centuries-old cases. So what we did for the Osmania DNA test, number one, we used the Y DNA or Y chromosome testing. It is important for you to understand that this test could only involve men. I know it's a little sexist, but unfortunately DNA is also sexist. Uh, DNA says one is a man, one is a woman. So that's why we use DNA testing. And, and the reason for that is we want to prove the direct connection of Serio Osmenia to a father, which means it is a son to a father, meaning a male to a male. And the only way for us to be able to do that, obviously we cannot test Serio and Pedro Gutiérrez and Antonio Sanson, is test their descendants. So we tested three men who are sons of men, who are sons also of men, because we are testing the Y DNA and women, unfortunately, do not have Y chromosomes. So that's why only men were used for the DNA testing. And we utilize easy DNA. This is not an advertisement for this company, but we use easy DNA, number one, because it is very easy to use. Uh, they have an office in the Philippines, and the best uh, part of their service is we didn't have to mail the DNA sample back to the U.S., but they did it themselves with their affiliated laboratory here in Cebu. So they have labs, affiliated labs in Cebu, in Manila, and other major cities in the Philippines. So that's why they're quite easy to use and reliable. And best of all, they are also the go-to DNA test of Senator Rafi Tulfo for his Rafi Tulfo in action whenever he wants to prove DNA uh, paternity uh, cases uh, in his show. So at least it has the, it has the um, what do you call this? The endorsement of Senator Rafi Tulfo. So again, um, Y DNA testing is uh, only individuals with a Y chromosome, meaning males, can have this type of testing. Because the Y chromosome is passed on in the same pattern as our family names, in many cases, Y chromosome testing is often used to investigate questions such as whether two families with the same surname are related, or at least descended from the same direct male line. It will never give you uh, false results because it will prove that this man was the father of this man, who's the son of this man, etc. If the, that the the Y DNA does not match, then it will automatically disprove paternity or kinship. So we had three men, as I said. Uh, for the DNA uh, sample. Um, for the Osmania family, uh, 
former Mayor Tom Osmeña was very kind to provide us with his sample. Uh, being a direct male line grandson of Sergio Osmeña Sr. He was, his father was Sergio Jr. And of course his grandfather was President Sergio Osmeña Sr. So it's a direct male line. There's, no, there's a continuous uh, passing on of the Y DNA. For the Gotiauco line, we, uh, he asked that his name does not appear in the report. So we call him Pedro Go, being the grandson of Pedro Gotiauco. He's also a direct male line grandson of Don Pedro Gotiauco. His father was also a son of Don Pedro Gotiauco. For the Sanson family, uh, we have Ronnie Sanson. He's a direct Mayline grandson of Don Julian Sanson, a first cousin of Don Antonio Sanson. Remember earlier I said we don't know um, his descendants today. So that's why, unfortunately, we had to utilize the DNA sample of a descendant of his first cousin, which still is a direct Mayline, which means that first cousin of Don Antonio Sanson. The father of Don Julian was a brother of the father of Don Antonio Sanson. So it's still safe. Uh, the sample is still uh, sufficient to, to prove or disprove kinship. So if this were the case, um, let's take a look at the first chart. The connection between Gutiauco and Osmeña, this would be the case. Um, the broken line means... That's uh, just alleged paternity um, because we, are, we have not yet proven based on the result. So this would be how the, the family tree would have looked like if chart one shows the Gutiauco osmeña paternity connection. Uh, chart two shows the sanson osmeña connection. So as you see, Antonio Sanson and Julian Sanson are first cousins. Uh, the father of Antonio Sanson was Jose Maria Tito de Sanson. And the father of Julian was Ambrosio de Sanson. So that's just an illustration uh, that we had to do in order for us to see how it would be once the testing was done. So if you'd like to see, uh, uh, so the, it was done through buccal swabbing, meaning the swab, they swab the cheeks. Well, I helped swab the cheeks and the, uh, Results were sent to the laboratory for processing. So finally, we go to the result. Um, so this is the result of the YSTR comparison between the Osmeña DNA and the Gutiauco DNA. Um, please don't mind the male one as Severino Agaton because um, in sending the result to the U.S., we just placed aliases for the names of the samples. But male one is the Osmeña DNA, and male two is the Gotiauco DNA. As you can see, they do not match in the SCR, meaning this is part of the DNA that they compared if the two people are related. If you can see the numbers, they do not match in... STR locus what, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, nine, 11, I don't know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 20, and the rest in the so as you can see they do not match in many of the points of the dna that they should match in just to give it a, a textual explanation in comparing the 23 markers which is the standard used today of tomas osmeña and those of pedro go the results indicate that they only matched in 9 out of 23 markers, genetic markers, clearly indicating 
a non-genetic connection in the paternal line. Meaning, they do not come from Pedro Gutiauco. At the same, both of them do not come from the same man, which was Pedro Gutiauco. And excluding them from coming from the same male line. But the fact that they had nine matches would tell us, actually, if you dig deeper into the genealogy, um, perhaps 200, 300, or even 500 years ago, they came from the same family already because there are nine matches. So there's still a relationship, but of course, in more recent years, meaning in the past 200, 300 years, there's no genetic match between the Gotiauco and the Osmeña family. And the last one, comparison of the Osmeña and Sanson DNA. As you can see, STR locus 1 to 23 are all matches. There is a 100% match in the DNA of the Osmeñas and the Sansons. Uh, you can see it. This is something that the labs have generated. And they are all a match. So to explain that, the comparison of the 23 markers of the Osmeña donor and those of the Sanson donor clearly indicates a 100% match of all markers. Thus, genetically, Tomas Osmeña and Ronnie Sanson cannot be excluded from being of the same male lineage, meaning they, they are most likely from the same male lineage. In addition, all patrilineal related male relatives and unknown number of unrelated males who have the same YSR profile cannot be excluded. Tomas Osmeña is 99.982%, almost 100%. Actually, if you, if you round it off, it's 100%. More likely to be patrilineally related, meaning related in the father's line, in the male line, to Ronnie Sanson. So in other words, the 100% match of the 23 markers indicates that they are closely related in the patri line and share a more recent common ancestor within three to five generations. So it's also very genealogically accurate that they share. If you look, if you remember the family tree, it was within three to five generations, uh, even if the sample is from a first cousin of Don Antonio Sanson. Now, the DNA match does not give us the name of the father. That's very important to understand. But, the D, but DNA results do not do that. But that's why I gave you the historical context. Who were the men suspected of being the father of Seri Osmeña? Because without the historical context, it would have been difficult to accept that even if the Osmeña DNA matches the DNA of the Sansons. What if it was another Sanson man? No, si Bako dili But um, based on historical context, based on what we know so far, there were only two men that Juan Osmeña was linked to. Antonio Sanson and Pedro Gutiauco. And now, thanks to DNA testing, we now know and I can confidently declare that Don Antonio Sanson was the real father of President Sergio Osmeña Sr. Thank you very much. And now um, I'd like to call on uh, Dr. Resil B. Mujares, a national artist for literature, um, to give his insights on behalf of the academics, the historians, and uh, writers of history. Sir, let's give him a round of applause, please. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, I was asked by uh, Todd to say a few words uh, this afternoon. 
and uh, as he suggested, I'm speaking in behalf of academics and historians. I would like to um, congratulate uh, Anya Boitis, uh, Marilu, uh, Todd, uh, Gavin, and all those involved in the in putting together what has resulted in the event this afternoon, which has finally put to rest a mystery that has been there for, I suppose, 145 years you know? uh, since uh, Don Sergio was born. The, uh, I mean, kind of, uh, you're quite happy that kind of a gap in the historical record has finally been uh, uh, filled. The, uh, the question that I've asked myself is why it has remained a mystery for so long, 145 years. And uh, while DNA, of course, has put the whole question to rest. I mean, one wonders as to why this has remained uh, unresolved uh, for so long. And I suppose uh, one thing that one can draw from this long-standing mystery is, I suppose what it says about Don Sario himself as a, as a, as a person. And uh, the... Uh, I mean, my own, my own uh, sense is that uh, kind of Don Sergio was, despite the fact that he's a very public figure, you know, no less than someone who had a long history of public service and reached the pinnacle of uh, that uh, field by serving as president of the Republic of the Philippines, despite such a great public record. He was, I think, essentially a very private, a very private uh, uh, person. And I suppose this is uh, kind of will, kind of, if one reflects on his own personal history, one begins to kind of have a sympathetic understanding as to why he was he was like this, you no, know, quite pri uh, private. He was not your hobnobbing you know, uh, back-slapping uh, uh, politician. He was kind of very proper, very discreet, kind of completely devoted to what he had chosen to be his vocation. And yet kind of uh, somewhat distant from things that kind of maybe in his view, purely personal. And so kind of... Uh, he did not engage in kind of politics as entertainment, gimmickry, and so on. He was completely focused on, on uh, the work of uh, governance and uh, public service. And I suppose that's one reason why kind of he probably felt for a long time that the matter of, you know, questioning as to who his real father was kind of is not really relevant to the to the core of uh, the mission that he set uh, he set for himself and so he felt that kind of he was so completely focused on on uh, on on his work that kind of he probably felt that this is going to be a this is going to be a destruction kind of so but i i I imagine, and this is a purely kind of, uh, kind of based on uh, kind of uh, my own understanding of the story. I heard that kind of in his final years, he really thought of like kind of making the big reveal and kind of, kind of, kind of uh, breaking from kind of, uh, Kind of, kind of say, uh, telling once and for all as to what his pers personal story was. The, 
kind of, he had been kind of kept this uh, purely personal matter a secret entire his life. Like his biography, for instance, the most extensive biography of Don Sirio Osmeña was a biography that I understand he commissioned himself. And this was Vicente Albano Passis's uh, two volume biography uh, for which kind of he sat for interviews because it was kind of in effect a commission biography. So it was kind of his uh, an official record of his life story. But if you read the two volumes, the question of paternity is completely, avo avo completely avoided. The book came out in 1971 and probably kind of, kind of, so in the 1960s, he was already putting this official record of his own life. And he, he decided he was not going to speak on this particular, on this particular uh, uh, subject and kind of, I was told I don't, I, I can't vouch for the, the veracity of the story that I heard that kind of in his last years, he felt the need to like finally convey to the family kind of, you know, uh, his, his, his paternity. But, but this did not happen, this did, uh, did not happen. No? It kind of probably it was not the right time until the time when there was no longer any time for, for him to do this. So in a way, I would like to think that what has happened this, this uh, afternoon is in a way a fulfillment of what may have been his deepest wish in his final years. So in a sense, this has put the whole matter to rest, it has come full circle, the story is complete. And so this is a great thing. I mean, what has happened this afternoon. So thank you to everyone involved in the initiative and good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mojares. And uh, now we would like to ask a member of the Sanson family the newly discovered relatives of the Osmeña family, uh, Father Edwin Zamora Kinan Udi, to give a response on behalf of the true father of President Sergio Osmeña Sr. A round of applause for Father Kinan, please. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Annabel Osmeña Boitis, Mrs. Uh, Maria Lourdes Enriquez Bernardo, the Osmeña family in attendance, Dr. Isil Juarez, honored guests, good afternoon. For and on behalf of the Sanson family, I thank Mrs. Aboitis and Mrs. Bernardo for spearheading this grand endeavor to discover the true father of the late president and statesman, Don Sergio Osmeña. It is relatively recently that the American historian in the Philippines, Dr. Michael Cullinane, has categorically named Capitan Antonio Sanson as the father of Don Sergio. In his book, published by the University of San Carlos Publishing House in November last year, entitled The Chinese Mestizos of Cebu City, 1750 to 1900. And with the availability of the U.S.-based DNA paternity test right here in Cebu, this historical fact has been firmly validated most scientifically. After 144 years to this day, there is no longer any reasonable doubt that the father of Cebu's beloved son, President Osmeña, was a Sanson. Therefore, I am thankful for our shared roots with the Osmeñas and our ancestor. I am thankful too to the science for giving mankind a great tool to answer an old mystery that has socio cultural as well as historical implications. It is my honor to wholeheartedly welcome the Osmanias 
to the sons and form to god all be the glory thank you thank you father and um actually that closes our event this afternoon we have merienda on the other room um and for those who would like to ask questions about the big reveal um this is also the time for our open forum but merienda is served ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your attention and for attending this activity yes any questions uh, please raise your hand so we can provide you with a microphone Okay, so please uh, help yourselves on the other room. Uh, merienda is served. And for those who just want to ask questions, I, I will put the microphone here in front so you can ask questions and we will answer your questions. Thank you. So, uh, so there you have it. The the real father of former Philippine president, Sergio Osmeña Sr., according to the DNA test result, is Don Antonio Sanson. So Don Antonio Sanson is a Chinese mestizo in Cebu living in Parian. So according to this um, revelation uh, by genealogist Tad Salas Losero, Doña Juana Osmeña was Doña Juana Osmeña uh, got linked to two men, um, Pedro Gochauco and also Antonio Sanson, and now the DNA test result revealed that the true father of Don Sergio Osmeña Senior is an is a Sanson, and it is declared that it is Don Antonio Sanson. So. To know more about the Chinese mestizos in Cebu, you should read the, this book on the Chinese mestizos in Cebu in the 1700s to 1900s. And um, this book, Ch the Chinese mestizos in Cebu, is available at Palm Grace Cebu Heritage Hotel. So thank you very much for joining us in this big reveal. And um, see you again tomorrow in the afternoon at 3 p.m. for another exciting event, a coffee talk on pre-colonial aesthetics with uh, UP Cebu Fine Arts Professor Jay Nathan Hore. Dagang salamat og maayong hapon sa tanan. <laughs>